Welcome to this week's webcast. We're so excited you're with us as always. We have a little bit of audio issues today, so if you can't hear us quite as loudly, that's why. Other than that, it's going to be an awesome webcast. And so I have a guest here, uh, Philip Renner. And Philip, it's great to have you here. Oh, I'm really excited to be here, and it's going to be a great show. Yes. And we're going to be talking about fasting today. Now, before we get into our topic, I need to remind you to continue to send in your questions. We love those questions. We're here for you. We're not here for ourselves. So that helps us to connect with you. And getting Greek is all about helping you to get it. So if you have a word that you want us to do a word study on, send that in. If you have a question about Greek grammar, about Greek vocabulary, any question you have regarding getting Greek, we'd be happy uh, to answer that. And also, um, we had a request to have our webcast dated because it says it helped, the person said it helps me if I can follow them by date and just in case they're not in chronological order. So we're going to work on uh, fixing that. That's an example of how you interacting with us helps, you, helps us to serve you better. And we're looking forward to several on-site seminars coming up in March and April, and I'll talk about that before the end of this webcast. So again, today we're talking about fasting. Now, fasting is a topic that is really important. Uh, there are many Christians that have never fasted. There are other Christians that fast as a way to try to get God's favor. They misunderstand the purpose of it. Uh, we're going to talk about that if you're fasting and you're not praying, really that kind of equals just being hard on yourself or you're just going without food. There's no real value. So we're not just going to talk about fasting, but we're going to talk about effective fasting. Fast, really we need to put this in there, fasting and prayer. Because yeah. without prayer, you know, that's the, it's a two-sided coin. A one-sided coin won't spend it. So prayer and fasting. But uh, I want to talk first of all just about the word fasting. What does the word itself mean uh, in Greek, in the original language? And here we are getting Greek. It's the word nestuo. And that is a really fascinating word. It's a compound word. It's got a negative particle on the front of it, ne, which means not or no. And I've said before that it's, you'll be in some parliamentary meetings and they'll say, the nays, even in, even in the U.S. Senate, they'll say the nays and the yays, meaning the yes and the no. So, nay, nu, eta, nay, not. And then, sitas is the word for wheat or grain. Now, karpos is a Greek word that's a generic word for food, but this is specifying wheat or grain. And so, you morph those two, and it means without grain or going without grain, which is really the basic type of food that they would have had at that time. So it's a, it's a way of saying without food, without food. And I have to throw this in there for you that are learning grammar, especially those of you that are new and you're learning the alphabet. If you'll notice, uh, this has uh, got the diphthong u in it, or u, epsilon, upsilon. <laughs> so nestuo, nestuo, okay? Diphthong is just two vowels that have one sound, but it's very important in understanding Greek grammar. So that's a little bit of grammar thrown in there. So Philip, welcome. And, uh, you know, teach us what you've learned about fasting over the years. You've learned a lot. Um, you know, have you ever heard anybody say, I fast television or I fast uh, Facebook? You know, I had one person tell me they're fasting, arguing with people. I said, that's not a fast. You just need to let the Holy Spirit work on that. <laughs> but we hear these things. What are your thoughts on fasting? Oh, I think that's just discipline. I think that's disciplining yourself not to be too addicted to social media or fasting your phone. I mean, it's just, it's not in the Bible. It says wheat or grain, which was basically their food. So that's what I want to throw out there. Mm -hmm. First of all is fasting is fasting, fasting and praying, which means no food. And there's uh, several different kinds of fasts that you can do. Um, the first one, is a liquid fast, which means, basically means you're going to drink a lot of water because I mean, we're made out of water and we need to drink a lot of water during the fast and that will help you uh, physically feel a lot better. Uh, so there's the liquid fast and then there's the Daniel fast, which is uh, only water, fruit and vegetables and that's very, it's a very strong fast. And, um, and then there's just strict, just, just water. All you drink is water. You don't have any coffee. You don't have any juice. All you have is water. And then, of course, there's what Moses did, and that's uh, no water, no food for 40 days. But those are different kinds of fasts that you can take. And I have to say that fasting is you know, 
is definitely in, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. When Moses fasted like that, he, um, you know, he saw the fiery hand of God write uh, the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. like he literally saw the fiery hand of God just write the Ten Commandments. I mean, that's, that's just awesome. He saw God's back. He was so close to God. Mm -hmm. And that happened, of course, because he had a relationship. But he really made a sacrifice, and he was on that mountain in God's presence without faith without food and without water. And um, the interesting thing about that is it says also that Joshua was on the mountain with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so really, Joshua also did a, you know, an extended fast mm -hmm. uh, because he was on the mountain with him. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was there making sure that, Josh, that Moses was you know, doing a good job and everything was okay and he was, he was with him. Mm -hmm. So that's another person who fasted in the Bible for you. But, um, but if you take, let's, you know, talk about Esther. Esther fasted for like, you know, three mm -hmm. days, told everyone that they're supposed to fast and, you know, and, and God moved in an amazing way and they, she saved her people. Mm -hmm. and, and today they still celebrate the celebration, I think it's called Mm -hmm. I think that's Porter, right. mm -hmm. you know, and, and that comes from when she fasted for three days and all the people with her and then she went to the king and said, uh, your servant's trying to kill me because I'm a Jew. But she risked her life and she prepared herself through fasting and praying. But you might say, oh, that's, that's all the Old Testament. Now you're talking about the Old Testament. We're living in the New Testament. So... I gotta tell you that Jesus fasted before he started his ministry. I, and, you know, if Jesus had to fast before he started his ministry and he was the Son of God, then how much more should me and you be fasting? That's right. I mean, how much more should me and you be fasting if it was necessary for Jesus? And Jesus said, you know, this kind of thing can happen only through fasting and praying. I don't think that that's an accident that there's that that is there. It's serious, and there are blessings that will come into your life only through fasting and praying. And it's a very very neglected subject, but it's one of the first things that Jesus did to start his ministry. It's kind of a wake up call for us. We need to be fasting and praying. And if you look at revivals that have happened through the years, two hundred years ago, fifty years ago, it, it it's all with a group of people that came together, they fasted and they prayed, they seek, sought God, they uh, decided that they wanted to bring a sacrifice, a sacrifice of praise. And I have to tell you that when you're fasting and praying, it's, it's just sacrifice. It's sacrifice for you, it's sacrifice for your family, it's sacrifice for your body, it's sacrifice. And uh, it's when you give that sacrifice that the fire will consume it. And so that's, that's the powerful thing about fasting and praying. And you see that time and time again. And even, even Paul, mm -hmm. he fasted, he prayed, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like the Nazarite vow. The Nazarite vow in Acts 18. Mm -hmm. He shaved his head. Mm -hmm. And for 30 days he fasted and he prayed. And then he went to Jerusalem to mm -hmm. pray. Mm -hmm. And then he had, saw some of the greatest miracles of his life. Mm -hmm. And his ministry, period. That's right. So fasting opens a supernatural door. And the reason why God likes fasting and when you're praying is the fact that fasting is humility before God. That's, that's what it is. And really the way God looks at it is 24 hours of humility before him. Because what you're saying when you're fasting and when you're praying, you're saying, I like God, I love God more than food. And so instead of eating food at dinner time, you go and you pray. Same thing at breakfast, same thing at you know, lunch. You do that, so you pray instead of eating, and that's fasting and praying. If you're just fasting, then you're just torturing your body, and there's no spiritual um, benefit to it whatsoever. So you have to be fasting and praying. And there's going to be days where you feel like you're hurting. Mm -hmm. you're going to, there's going to be days where you feel like you're hurting really bad. But 
God will pull you through it. And uh, I'm going to open up the scripture, mm -hmm. but I mean, those some of the scriptures that you were talking about, fasting and praying, yeah, are really we're, cool about Paul. About Paul, uh, two separate times, both in Second Corinthians. And uh, you know that I just finished the commentary on 2 Corinthians, and so it's big in my heart right now. And 2 Corinthians is all about Paul saying to the, to the church, this is what a new covenant minister looks like. This is how a new covenant minister orders his life. This is how a new covenant minister walks in the spirit. So it's ironic to me that one of the arguments I hear against fasting is that it's an old covenant practice and yes, Jesus fasted, but that was technically before the new covenant because he hasn't died yet. That's what they say. Uh, but here you have the example of a new covenant minister, which is Paul, making a case for what a new covenant minister does. And in chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians, he mentions that he, he endured fastings. And in chapter 11, he said in fastings often or repeatedly. It wasn't just something that he did. Somebody said, oh, he did that once, and that's what it's referring to in Acts 18, the Nazarite vow. No, 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 plural, fastings often. So it was a lifestyle of fasting for Paul. And uh, this concept that it's, it's old covenant. As a matter of fact, you see, as a pastor, people come to me all the time. They'll say, Pastor, I heard this. Someone recently came to me and said a very well-known teacher, very popular teacher, is teaching that fasting is never to be done by New Testament believers. And you know what he said? He said, well, you know, the bridegroom, you don't fast, the bridegroom doesn't fast when they're with the bride, you know, where they use that with Jesus. And so we're with Jesus and we're in Christ. They only fasted in the Old Testament because it hadn't happened yet. But here you see Paul doing this. The same teacher teaches that we don't need to wrestle against uh, spiritual warfare anymore. There's no spiritual warfare. Jesus did it all. It's all done. So we just sit here and let it happen. The problem with that is Paul writing to believers, teaching them the basics of Christianity, which is what Ephesians is. Ephesians is a mini version of Romans, which is the essentials of Christianity. So it's a condensed version of the essentials of Christianity. Saul fit to say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle against principalities and powers. And I think there's a spiritual warfare element to fasting too. I don't know how you feel about that. Oh, for sure. For sure. A lot of things will seem like they're not moving, but then when you fast, I gotta tell you, the things move. And I mean, there's a story that we all know, and that's Daniel, uh, because he was doing the Daniel fast, 21 days, and finally the angel shows up, and he says to the angel, where have you been? And what does the angel say? The angel says that I was warring in the spirit, I was defeating the demons, but I'm finally here right now, it's not a coincidence that that's in the Bible. It's there for a purpose, and it shows that fasting and praying is spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a year where I was fasting quite a bit, and I'd done a very extended fast, and then I did a 21-day fast, and, and, and then I did another fast, and in between all those fasts, I was fasting maybe one day, maybe two days a week, and I would wake up in the morning thinking, man, I'm gonna eat today. And the Lord would say, you're not gonna eat today. And, and I was like, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Will you please stop? I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. I kind of really want to say I understand that. that. Will you please just stop? Will you just give me a break? I mean, it's too difficult for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what the Lord said to me, he said, Philip, do you really want to know why you're fasting and why you're praying like this? And I said, yeah, what? why do I just wake up in the morning and you tell me to fast? And he said, Philip, because fasting is spiritual warfare. And fasting is breaking the obstacles before you get to them. That's excellent. Opening the doors so you don't have to kick them and you I don't have it. to open them. And he said, Philip, there are difficulties in life that would have stopped you, but would but will never stop you mm -hmm. because you've already destroyed them in prayer. And that's actually pretty biblical because mm -hmm. even if you look at the full armor of God, mm -hmm. then one of the, uh, the pieces of armor that a Roman soldier had was the lance. And the lance wasn't for close combat. The lance was to be thrown at a far, far distance. And, and basically, that's what fasting is. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's when you're winning the battle and you're destroying the obstacles ahead of time. I got that scripture. Mm -hmm. Romans 12, we all know this. Romans 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you can have a lot, you're going to need a lot of mercy if you're fasting and you're seeking God. And you wake up one morning and you're your stomach's hurt for like six hours. That basically means you go and pray. You go and pray, you seek God, the pain will leave because it's not meant to be torture, but you're gonna need God's mercy. You go and you pray, you seek God, you, you, um, you conquer whatever you're dealing with in prayer and you're good for you know the next 10 days or something. But here's what it says. So, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now he is talking about, of course, that we have to have discipline in Christ Jesus. We have to discipline our mind, to dis discipline our flesh. But this is a person that fasted, that sought God mm -hmm. and just said he fastings often. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there's nothing like being a living sacrifice than when you're fasting, when everybody else is eating around you and going, hi. When restaurants are calling your name, when you have a headache, when you have mm -hmm. dizziness, when, uh, when you just wake up and you're really, really tired, and you're going through pain. And what that means basically is go pray, go pray. And it's an awesome place to be because it means that you're empty of your own strength. And I think it's really cool to be empty of your own strength. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have your own ideas, guess what? You're going to get God ideas. Mm -hmm. If you don't have your own strength, guess what? You're going to get God's strength. So if you're watching this right now and you're saying, God, I feel really empty. Praise the Lord. That yeah, means that right. God can fill you up. That's right. God can fill you up. And, and that's what fasting is about. You're... You're so empty on the inside of yourself, of your dreams, of your, your, of your passions, of food. And so God fills you up. And it's so powerful and it's so strong. And the rest of that verse says, Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you're fasting and when you're praying, man, you're going to get ideas from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. When I write songs, I write them when I'm fasting and when I'm praying. It's like something is deposited into my brain. Every fast that I've ever done, there is an idea or a revelation or a message that I, that I get that I preach for years or that I sing for years, a song that goes much farther than I could ever go. And I got it as a result of fasting and praying. And so fasting and praying is spiritual warfare. It's strong. There are people right now, there's someone watching right now, and you're, you're, uh, you're a businessman. I lost all my ideas. You don't need your ideas. You need God ideas. Mm -hmm. You need to fast, you need to pray, and you will get that deposit from the Holy Spirit to build that ministry, to build that idea, so that you can sow in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The purpose of receiving finances from the Lord is to sow into the kingdom. And it says that you may improve what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The will of God will be revealed through fasting and praying. Maybe so, not something that is like completely new, but it will be a confirmation that is in your heart and it will release God's blessing and God's power. And so fasting is supernatural. And when you're fasting and when you're praying, I would encourage you to quote scripture. Quote scripture when you're fasting. Don't just pray in tongues. You know? Uh, speak to God like He's your friend. Because He is your friend. It's a time when uh, you can be very, very real with God. Where you can open up with God in a, in a new way. Mm -hmm. And today, 
uh, I was talking about the word worship, and the word worship uh, in Greek means kiss, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it means kiss, and the mm -hmm. Greek word is? Proskuneo. Proskuneo. Yeah. Proskuneo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, when I kiss my wife, and the way I want to kiss my wife, I never do it in public like I do it behind a closed door. I open up to my wife in a completely different way than I do in public. And that's what God's trying to say about worship and, and about fasting. It's, it's your reasonable service. It's you opening up to God like never before. And you're taking all the skeletons out of your closet mm -hmm. or all of your heart and say, okay, God, you can have this. You can have this right now. You, you, fine, fine. You can have this. You can have the submission authority. You can, mm -hmm. you can have, um, you know, the sexual sense. You, you, you can have the pride. You can have all of this. It's, it's you opening up and say, God, this is my house. I don't want you to occupy just one room right now. I want you to be in all the rooms of my heart right now, everything. And it's you humbling yourself before God. And so it's supernatural. But what I want to tell you is you, you have to be very careful how you fast. Um, you wouldn't want to do a 40 immediately. That's basically killing yourself. <laughs> you have to have a word from the Lord to mm -hmm. do a 40, mm -hmm. yeah. not because I'm talking about it. Mm -hmm. It has to be a word from the Lord to do a 40. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you start slow. You start with like, you know, like a, a one-day fast. You start with a three-day fast. And then, you, then you graduate to a three-day fast. Then maybe a seven, then a ten, then a fourteen. And you very slowly make sure that your body is ready. Mm -hmm. And so it's a process. It's a process that, that you need to do. And... Again, Jesus did it, we got to do it. Paul did it, I mean, we have to do it. We have to seek God. Now, what would you say to people that, uh, that say, well, it's just works. It's works, and we're under grace. This seems awfully works-oriented. What would you say to that? Because I hear that. I'd say it's holiness. Okay. It's holiness. Then reading your Bible is works, too. Okay. That's what I'd say to that. Okay. I mean, we are saved by faith, not by works. Yes. I'm not talking about you getting, God getting to love saved, you. getting God to love you. God loves you regardless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here's the deal. You will open up to God differently. That's you it. will understand how to open up to God. That's and it. you'll realize that God has always just wanted to open up to you. Mm -hmm. But you didn't know how to receive it. Or how to talk to him. And that's that's what fasting and praying is. It's talking to God. It's sacrifice. And I'm telling you, just like the Old Testament, I mean when they when they put that lamb on the sacrifice, fire came. Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna come when you're fasting and when you're praying. Every great song that I've ever written has been through fasting and praying. But the way my ministry started in Russia and it literally exploded in like, you know, like a month. It, it totally took me off guard. And I asked God, why? Why am I seeing people healed? I'm not the best musician. I'm, I'm not the best singer. Why am I uh, seeing people who, who were barren, but, but God has blessed them and they, they get healed during worship service? Why am I seeing all this? Why am I seeing eyes open? Why am I seeing ears open? Why am I seeing demons shake during worship? I'm like, this. I'm not this good. What is the deal? And, and God just let me know. Doors open because you have already opened yeah. them in prayer. Yeah. You're not that good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not that good. I need Jesus. You need Jesus. And it's one of the weapons that he has given us mm -hmm. is to fast and to pray. And it's very important to do this, but I have to be um, very honest with you. You need, absolutely need to have a word from the Lord. And when you get out of a fast, there's also a big sin in the way you get out of a fast. So you can't just, you know, fast for 14 days and then eat. Go eat a pizza. Well, I, I ate 
14 sneakers, Snickers bars, and but I felt it. It was really bad. I mean, I, I learned the hard way. I'm, so I'm, I'm telling the truth. Physically, it's really bad for you. All right. So let's just say you have a do a three day fast. And you say, well, how do I get out of it? You don't go to the steakhouse and eat immediately everything that your your heart desires. That's called a fit of carnality. You're a feasting of the flesh. There's, there is a uh, discipline. God will continue to discipline you even when you get out of the fast. And I believe it's, it, it, the hard part of a fast is getting out of the fast. Mm-hmm. And it's God disciplining you during that fast. And he will continue to speak to you when you're getting out of it. Mm-hmm. And so like if you take a three-day fast, then your three days is over, what are you going to do? First day, eat salad. Eat salad. You know, continue to drink water. Don't go and drink, I don't know, you know, a a gallon of Coca-Cola. You know, don't hurt your body in the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you're supposed to get out in a way that is holy and acceptable to God. If it's a week, you know, for a couple of days, you need need to eat some, you know, manna or oatmeal or something that is soothing to your stomach and then you go into uh, salad and maybe chicken later. Mm-hmm. But but actually the rule is as long as the fast, that's how long it's going to take for you to get back into eating normally. That's the rule. And you have to work to get there. But, but that is the rule. And uh, that will protect you because a lot of people will say, well, you gain weight when you fast. Not if you get out the right way. You're actually more more healthy and so it's there's just a lot of things that, that you need to think about yeah but it's it's important but if you start where you are you know if someone yeah. has never fasted and you fast a day you fast 24 hours that's progress it's like i've talked yeah. about prayer you know christians are really good at pretending they know how to do things and i meet so many people that pretend they know how to pray and when they're just honest with me and I begin to help them and teach them how to pray. And they might pray 15 minutes a day. Well, that's 15 minutes more than they prayed the day before. And, yeah. and then they, they graduate. Fasting is the same way. Start where you are, but start. Start where you are, but start. And just understand, I mean, Philip has got these testimonies, the amazing things. God, know that God's no respecter of persons. It's not that Philip fasted and God did this for him and gave him these ideas, but he won't do it for you. He is waiting to do it for you, and he wants to do it for you because he loves you. And the scripture says, draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. There's so much more to this topic. You know, I I thought of, and I don't want to open this up because I know you're so excited about it, which is good. It's your passion. But have you ever noticed it said, after Jesus fasted, angels came and ministered to him. That's what it says there. You can receive angelic strength through that fasting that is supernatural i think you open up the door to so many blessings of god it's absolutely amazing well we want to thank you for being with us this time and i don't want you to forget that we're coming your way if you live in ohio really even if you live right here in our headquarters which is indianapolis we're going to be less than an hour and a half away from indianapolis we're going to be in greenville ohio for the getting greek seminar coming up in march that'll be our next one then we're going to be extensively out on the west coast of the united states Go to our website and look for that date in Ohio in March, mid-March, and also register. It's already starting to fill up. It's really getting full quickly. I want to see you there. If you live in Cincinnati, if you live in Dayton, if you live in Columbus, anywhere in the state, we'd love to see you there. And also, don't forget to help us financially. You will be amazed at what your gift does. We leave a legacy of believers getting deeper into the Word of God. I said, we're still believing for 15 new partners, and we would love for you to be one of them. It's very easy. Just click on the Give button and help us to continue this ministry. We're believing for a four-fold expansion in 2016 of Getting Greek. That means we're believing to do four times what we did in 2015. Amen. And uh, we want you to play a part in that. And your offering will help Thanksgiving go up to God. Well, Philip, it's so great to have you here. Uh, you're welcome back anytime. And uh, don't forget to uh, begin fasting. Just begin, and Amen. God will meet you right where you are. Amen. Would you I like to say, say yes, one go more thing? I want to say one more thing. Um, if you're sick, and for instance, you need to have sugar in your body, mm-hmm. um, be faithful. 
Be faithful to God. Do what is sacrifice for you. That's basically what fasting is. It's sacrifice. I was talking to a homeless person. He walked up to me and he said, Philip, I used to live on the streets. I mean, to me, not eating a week is like nothing. <laughs> and I said, so do three weeks. And he looked, oh, that's a little harder. <laughs> and so it, it has to be sacrifice. It has to be sacrificed for you. And so be very careful when you do it. Know that it's a word from the Lord, not a word from me, yeah. not yeah. a word, word yeah. from my brother over here, but yeah. you know, know that it's a word from the Lord. And be activated by your faith, not our faith. Mm-hmm. And we love you, and uh, you know, it's, it's awesome to be here. Thank you for the honor. Excellent, excellent. We'll see you next time. Jesus loves you. We love you. Be blessed. This webcast is a production of the Getting Greek Seminars. We are so happy that we can help you go deeper into the riches of God's Word. If you have any further questions, want to host a seminar at your church, or become a monthly partner, Keith and Lori would love to hear from you. You can reach them at connect at gettinggreek.org. Also, you can find us on our website, www.gettinggreek.org, and on Facebook.